So I noticed when creating bills of material and products, there were missing costs, which we don't like. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to import costs into Sin7. First of all, let me show you what I mean. On the bill of material screen, we scroll down and scroll to the right, we see there are missing costs right here. So let's just grab one, PUBP, a rule pump. I'm gonna click edit, that'll bring us to the product screen. We'll scroll down till we see the product options. Here's the code, and then there's the cost we're looking for. There's also Canadian and European and Chinese yen, or excuse me, Chinese yuan. This is the cost we wanna fill in, our home currency cost. So product options cost is what we're looking for. Now, in a previous video, we did the product import and we did it from the QuickBooks export spreadsheet. So that's what we're looking at here is some data that we exported from QuickBooks. We have the item list and I've gone through the item list and saw that we already cleaned up the codes so there's no categories mixed in there. So I'm just gonna change this column header to say product options code because that's really what it will translate into. Then I'm gonna go over here to the cost and we'll just call that the product options cost. While we're at it, might as well throw the price in there. I saw the price was missing too, so we'll do that. Product options price. All right, I'll save that. And now we're ready to start the SIN7 import. The SIN7 import can be found from the product screen. So we'll go to the product screen. Right here under products, we'll click products and then actions right down here, and then import and update products. That's what we're looking for. Down below, it has import from file. That's what we're gonna click on, and then choose the file. The file is called items from QB 1021. It's on my desktop, and I'll grab that. Okay, I grabbed that. Now over here on the right-hand side, when we scroll to the bottom, we click the next step button. And here's our import mapping the two rows that show us what's on the spreadsheet, and then the SIN7 field we're trying to import that into. So here's our product options code right here. We're gonna map that to our product options code there. Scroll down, here's our product options cost, and we're gonna map it to product options cost US dollar right there. And then let's do our product options price. We have a retail price, and a wholesale price. Let's double check the spreadsheet and see what it is. That looks like the retail price to me, so we'll use retail price. Product options retail, US dollar, right there. Okay, we're all set. I cleared out the rest of the fields I don't really want to change. Now let's see what it does when we click next step. It says group by code, which is what we want because we're using the code, we're not using the name or the style code we're using the product options code, so that's correct. Click next, it says it's gonna create one new product, that's interesting, one new product option, okay. And it says product name is a required field. So we have to go back and select that. Now in Sense 7, the product name is really a short description. So that's what we're looking for. The product code is generally an alphanumeric value of five to nine characters. So already the description in QuickBooks is pretty short. So I'm just gonna go ahead and use the description field as the product name. I like to change the column header to make it easier to find when we use the import column header mapping field. I changed the column header so I have to go back and re-grab the spreadsheet. So I'll go back here and grab it again. Okay, we have our product name and our product code, our cost and our price, we're ready to try it again. Click next, and yes, we still want to group by code. Click next. Great, looks like we're clear to go. There's no red message there. Click next. Looks like everything's ready. Click import new products. We got an error message on one product, so I'll go back to the spreadsheet and delete that line. I don't want it anyway, so it's okay. Don't get discouraged if you run into error messages. It's actually quite normal. Rarely do you get it right the first time. 
Okay, this time I went through it. We've got a green symbol, import complete, looks great. Let's go check our work. Gonna go to the product screen. And so far it looks like we have more costs than we did before. That's looking good. That is looking good. Let's go look at our bills material. Look at that, like magic. We've got costs on our bills material. Thanks for joining me today. I think this same activity can be used in a lot of different applications. You may have a vendor that changes his costs, by the way, and you may have to update your costs, or you may need to change your prices. Either way, you can use this exercise to import your costs and your prices.